everybody to the blockbuster day so today is the big day for the big budget and 2020 starting of the decade let's hope for the very very best and uh, there are many high expectations especially from the personal income tax viewpoint a big big welcome to dr niranjan hirandandani he's our uh, past president of course president of asset chairman for the first time we are doing a new thing that we are uh, having both the chambers together which is a very very red letter day i would say for imc2 so welcome Niranjan Bhai, over to you. Thank you so much because we have just two minutes left. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks to uh, President, thanks to the trustees of uh, IMC to agree to this kind of a joint session. So I'm really, really very grateful to it. I think uh, uh, Mr. Ram Gandhi initiated this idea uh, maybe five years ago that we need to integrate much more with ASOCHAM, we being the founding chamber of ASOCHAM and be able to do it. So in uh, followance of that, we've been able to hold the first formal program. And uh, I, I assure you that this will not be the last. It's certainly going to be a good beginning. So we thought that we should do it together. Number two, I think uh, we have to be very clear that uh, with the markets being down, uh, without optimism coming from Indian Merchants Chamber and from ASOCHAM, it's not going to work. Because industry has to be optimistic, no matter what it is. Because if we look down, we will go down. If you look up, I'm sure we'll start going up. Absolutely. Number three, I think uh, we need to be very ambitious because what has happened is uh, people are just saying we want an incremental improvement in the situation. I think those days are gone when incremental in uh, increase is going to work for India. The expectations of the people of India is much, much stronger. So anything less than a double-digit growth in GDP being targeted is not acceptable to me or to ASOCHAM, and I'm sure IMC will follow that route, that we want a double-digit growth. Number four, we want an inclusive growth. You can't have 10 companies in India uh, creating the market cap for India. It has to be the uh, 2,50,000 members of uh, ASOCHAM are SMEs, and if those people are not going to grow, then India will not grow. And the last is that if employment has to go up, growth has to be with inclusiveness of employment generation. We can't have just industrial growth by itself without inclusiveness. So while industrial growth is imperative and we want it and we welcome it because we are already given the incentive of a 25% tax rate, it's not enough because it has to percolate down to the SMEs and small people and other people and those people are doing I'm sorry, I'll add one more thing. The liquidity crisis is huge and unbelievable. Uh, at least 2 lakhs out of 4 lakh 50,000 members of uh, ASOCHAM are not having liquidity. The big guys will be able to manage on their own, but the small guys just don't get money, and monetary needs are absolutely imperative. We have referred to the finance minister, we have talked to PMO, we have talked about to Reserve Bank governor, and unless we don't get the liquidity improvement, the contradictory is true. What has happened is that 3 lakh crores are lying with the banks and, and uh, uh, the banking system, and the money is not coming down to the people. And this is nonsensical. We are not in the British Raj, where food was there in the granaries, but not given to the poor people of India. I think that kind of thought process needs to be demolished completely. I think a strong view has to be taken on the issue of liquidity because unless that is done and you don't put oil in the radiator of the cars and vehicles of this economy, we are not going to be able to survive. So I'm very happy and uh, very ambitious uh, looking forward to all this. Thank you, IMC. Thank you, uh, uh, Ashish. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks uh, to all of you over here for being present. And uh, it's a delight to come back. Thank you. Thank you, Nirajana the budget today there are other positive cues as well Maruti's numbers have been good and that is generally the barometer of you know the way the economy is headed so we're going into the event with some positive cues uh, but let's see uh, about three tenths of a percent higher now back at that psychological 12,000 mark for the nifty and there you have it uh, the finance minister is getting ready to present the budget this time around okay in about I think less than two minutes from now yeah the speaker is still calling the house to order so we will have to wait for him to tell the finance minister the president of the budget. I think he's told her. Ladies and gentlemen, the finance minister.
माननीय मंत्री जी आइटम नंबर वन हाँ जी एक मिनट जी सर आई राइज टू ले ऑन द टेबल अ कॉपी ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पेपर्स रिपोर्ट ऑफ द फिफ्टीन फिनांस कमीशन फॉर द ईयर 2020-2021 explanatory memorandum on the action taken on the recommendations contained in the report of the 15th finance commission item number 2 simati nirmala sitaraman ji naye dashak ka pehla aam budget mein main aap sab ka abhinandan karta hu swagat karta hu so i write with your permission to present a statement of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the government of india for the year 2020-2021 के लिए भारत सरकार के अनुमादित भारतीय और वे विवरण प्रस्तुत करेंगी निर्मला सीतारमण जी डेवलपमेंट फॉर ऑल इंडिकेटेड इन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स एग्जॉर्टेशन ऑफ सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास दिस वुड एंटेल रिफॉर्म्स अक्रॉस वेड्स ऑफ द इकोनॉमी साइमल्टेनियसली इट वुड मीन ईल्डिंग मोर स्पेस for the private sector together they would ensure higher productivity and greater efficiency and three ours shall be a caring society that is both humane and compassionate antyodaya is an article of faith so i repeat this budget is woven around three prominent themes aspirational india economic development and a caring society the digital revolution which has placed india in a unique leadership position globally will see the next wave we shall aim to improve physical quality of life through national infrastructure pipeline risk mitigation through disaster resilience social security through pension and insurance penetration each one of these initiatives and their components would be benchmarked to international standards and the indices would be announced soon before i move to elaborate on each of these three themes i wish to recite a small verse in kashmiri सोन वतन गुलजार शालीमार ह्यू सोन वतन गुलजार शालीमार ह्यू दल मन फोलवून पंपोष ह्यू नवजवान अन हुंद भूषण कुमार ह्यू न्योन वतन च्योन वतन सोन वतन नुंदबोनी वतन रिटर्न रिटर्न फ्री फिलिंग इंप्रूव इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट फ्लो एंड ओवरऑल सिंप्लीफिकेशन रिफंड प्रोसेस हैज बीन सिंप्लीफाइड एंड हैज बीन मेड फुल्ली ऑटोमेटेड विद नो ह्यूमन इंटरफेस इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इनवॉइस इज अनदर इनोवेशन वेर इन क्रिटिकल इंफॉर्मेशन शैल बी कैप्चर्ड electronically in centralized system it will be implemented in a phase manner starting from this month itself on optional basis it will facilitate compliance and return filing several measures have been taken for improving compliance that has been a worry for many of the states sir aadhar based verification of tax payers is being introduced this will help in weeding out dummy or non existent unit dynamic qr code is proposed for consumer invoices 
GST parameters will be captured when payment for purchases is made through the QR code. A system of cash reward is envisaged to incentivize customers to seek invoice. Deep data analytics and AI tools are being used for crackdown on GST input credit, input tax credit refund, input tax credit refund and other frauds and to identify all those who are trying to game the system. Invoice and input tax credit matching is being done wherein returns having mismatched more than 10% or above a threshold are identified and pursued. Significant policy level changes have also been made. GST rate structure is also being deliberated upon so as to address issues like inverted duty structure. Customs. A number of measures have been taken for easy, ease of doing business. India's quantum leap in the trading across border parameter of ease of doing business rankings by the World Bank is a testimony to these efforts. India's rank on this parameter improved from 14, 146 to 80 in 2018. And first cut in income tax rate uh, given the various slabs they are to be set off against non-availability of deductions and exemptions. So the, it won't be such a big uh, income tax boost if you're thinking it's 5% per slab or anything like that. And the dividend distribution tax is gone. At least ultimately disappointed because there is no explicit stimulus, particularly in areas like rural spending or infrastructure, though we have some income tax changes. Will this do anything to turn the economy around? Well, I think it has some very positive aspects because the disposable income in the hands of the middle class people, in the hands of people earning lower salaries will increase. So consumption has to increase. I think that was because of the lowering of tax labs was due to increase in consumption so that consumption will increase. I know you mentioned that we have to see the calculation whether the old system is better or the new system is better. But those individuals who do not of things so three three hour speech 70 mm movie and over to niranjan bite for his expert comments i don't think i'm the expert but uh, whatever summary one could get is there are three points in the budget which i think set the tone in the right direction which i think uh, was very correctly set which was the segments in which the emphasis should be done what is lacking in those segments is the adequacy of an increase in those segments to justify that it would kickstart the economy. So what was said was absolutely perfect. I don't think we can find fault in the first part of the speech because those are the segments which I think the country does need. For example, I think the talk in respect of the agriculture sector was superb. I don't think I would have anybody in this country would have made. In fact, I would have thought that Mr. Suresh Kotak has written that part of a speech of the finance minister because it was totally farm-oriented budget. What was lacking, I believe, is the consequential commitment of amount of money to increase to that sector to this extent. The biggest disappointment to me was the too much focus on the fiscal deficit. I think we could have spent at least a lakh of crores, lakh and a half crores more and not really worry about the fiscal deficit in terms of inflation because I don't think the inflation is a big worry. What is really a worry in this segment is that there is inadequate spending or demand which is taking. So I think the taking the bull by the horns was not there in the budget speech as it is. So as far as the agriculture sector, I think she's really focused extremely well and there is no question that uh, nobody could have done better. The second part of the whole thing was about water, wellness and other sectors. Again, well drawn out speech uh, and the sectors are fully addressed. But again, I think the adequacy of the issue will not only be the amount of expenditure, but also the execution capabilities of being able to provide water to every segment of the economy. 
one of the turning points in that sector was the approval of solar paneling for the purposes of doing water. Today, what is happening in the farm sector is that with free water and free uh, free uh, water and free power, that uh, the gensets are being run 24 by 7 by the farmers. I think after the solar power units are given to the farmer, it will run only during the time there is sunlight. So your reduction of power use will come down by 50%, which means in two years' time, government will recover the cost of solar power provided to the farmers. And at the same time, the excessive water utilization in the agriculture sector will really do it. I thought education had a very good focus. I think the thought of uh, combining education in terms of skilling and to be able to do that combination is historic. India in 60 years has failed miserably in the segment of education except provision of early education to women and girls. I think that has succeeded. But all the rest, we have not had excellence in education. I think the target in terms of excellence in education appears to be a very good motive. But lots of last couple of years of education side has actually failed miserably. So we are hoping that the policy framework by the HRD ministry will actually make those kind of changes into a reality that we really need to do it. On the uh, industry economic development that we were talking about, I think the intention appears to be correct, which is the economic corridors, the electronic manufacturing, medical devices, the technical ideas and the amount of expenditure into that segment is good. Duty refunds is a big problem for especially for small and medium enterprise and exports. That kind of a thing, refunds in terms of talking, I think will be useful to that segment in the terms. I'll backtrack to the extent of education. I think education direction is very, very important. Up till now, primary education is the focus which has succeeded in terms of girls' education. And I think that's a good victory for India. But I don't think uh, higher and technical education has made any steps. It's been a significant failure. And I think the emphasis in terms of education. What I loved was the fact that online education in terms of all segments is going to be taken up. I think this is a paradigm because this is exactly which was not being permitted by the systems of university education. And that kind of a thing that you will actually learn on your iPad, laptops and other things, I think, because each and every person in India gets a mobile phone. And I think that converting into a smartphone will change the paradigm of education in all segments of society. I think that's an extremely important segment that we are really talking about. Skill development is extremely important and I think the focus on skill development will take India to the next sector, uh, which is extremely important. So a lot of uh, directional changes is excellent. I, I cannot really find fault in that. I can only find that the, there is inadequacy of allotment of resources in this segment. Uh, deficit financing should have been increased. I think if you had gone up by even 1% more, that 0.5% is not okay. I think another 1% if we had increased, we would have got easily 1.5 to 2 lakh crores additional expenditure, which was absolutely necessary. Exporters, SMEs have been complaining about uh, the duty refunds not coming up, and these people are really suffering in that end. So when you say you want to be a good exporter, uh, my own company don't get income tax refunds. While demands and all that, the officers come to our offices to sit and collect the refund, uh, the payments. So that kind of a thought process is correct. And I think the complaints in terms of tax terrorism has only grown in the last year. 
So any statement made by the finance minister is more than welcome, both by IMC and ASOCHAM. I think uh, we really do need to uh, take up those issues in terms of it. All the urban infrastructure uh, and focus on that is wonderful. And I think that is something which we really need to do. I loved another part of the thought process in education where she said that uh, uh, young engineers would be taken as apprentices and joined into all urban local bodies and all companies and those would be facilitated. I find that most of the engineers going into the industrial enterprises are inadequately trained in terms of practical experience. Yes, and I think this thought process in terms of all these things is correct. Roads have been significantly grown. And I think that growth goes to Mr. Gadkari's uh, table. And I think that's the extraordinary growth. I would, I, however, I've thought we should have multiplied by two. We have 35 kilometers of uh, national highways per day. We would have looked at it as 70 kilometers of national highway per day. I know that sounds excessive, but it's not, because that's the segment which can give a multiplier effect into the whole thing. Railways also are uh, good uh, seaports, in the inland highways, air traffic, uh, all these things are there. Power sector, I thought, needed much more. And uh, though we are now surpluses to power, but that is partly because the manufacturing segments have not really been able to grow at the same pace. So I think the focus on power needs to be much more uh, into this segment, and especially when we are trying to face climatic change, then the growth of uh, non-thermal kind of units needs to be further done. Oil and gas will be the next change that you will find. And the last few days in the newspaper relating to the rationalization of gas distribution by Gale, I think, uh, was indirectly mentioned, and I think that is something which is going to create a new paradigm for India. Gas costs will fall down by 25%, not mentioned by the finance minister, but just by what she said. So that is going to be the new uh, paradigm for India in terms of power and also doing. For example, Dabol, which works only three to four months in a year now, can work 365 days of the year and bring down power costs down by 30% in terms of only Maharashtra itself. So a non-functioning unit will become functional. So the direction in which she spoke is certainly uh, things which I thought was uh, extremely good and we really needed to do. The quantum of uh, thought process in terms of the spend into that is, should be multiplied by two. Uh, that's the only way um, to really uh, take the whole thing. The emphasis of the sectors also was correct. So she talked about textile, she talked about uh, uh, travel and tourism, she's talked about SMEs and all these sectors. The advantage of these sectors, investments and uh, benefits will also provide not only GDP growth, but it would also provide for employment. Those are the sectors where we can cover the entire deficit of employment in India. So I think that is something which is really uh, important. Health also she focused on. So as I said, there is a huge amount of uh, bareness is there. Good governance with uh, terrorism by the, uh, uh, by the segments is something which is scary because on one side you talk about good governance, but we don't see that happening at the grassroots level. And I think uh, that is something she allured to more than once. So I think that's uh, a thing which we should be very, very happy about as far as this is concerned. I don't think the markets are going to be happy uh, simply because the biggest benefit that came on was the dividend distribution tax. But I think uh, we needed some lot of change. The individual tax which has uh, come down I think will benefit a part of the segments of uh, individual taxpayers because up till now many of them uh, took deductions, ETC, all the other deduction for home loans and other things and if those are withdrawn then the benefit would be extremely marginal. Of course the computation in detail will give us the idea as to the ex exact amount of benefit. I thought that uh, the 42% surcharge tax as the higher rate of tax should have gone by now. Uh, you cannot uh, say that only foreigners who invest into India should benefit. 
and individuals who would increase their income should not be given a similar benefit in India. Do you want us to go and be outstation investors into India and not Indian investors into the country as individuals? I think uh, that is really depriving India of people to wanting to go and do external investments into India rather than to do in the local level. So I think there is a directional fantastic thing and I, she would get 105 points out of 100 on the direction that is there. But I think on the economic front, there is, seems to be something lacking in terms of it. In the sector of housing, she has continued the benefit in respect of affordable housing. She has done a partial corrections in 43CA where the deduction, uh, where uh, if your housing prices have crashed more than 5, 10, 15, 20%, the circle rates in many states have even been pushed up, not down. So the difference is not going to be 5 to 10%. In some places, including places like Nariman Point, the differences are more than 10% on the circle rate, which is called the ready reckoner rate in Maharashtra. The difference in reality is much more. So I think that uh, will need to be increased if it has to be fair in terms of it. On the indirect tax uh, uh, route, as far as that is concerned, I'm not uh, very savvy about the details and nitty gritty of that. But I think direction wise, uh, I couldn't hear a better story. Uh, volume wise, in terms of the economics of the whole thing, there seems to be the uh, thing seems to be lacking. I think uh, in direction, it should be 105 out of 100. the president as uh, if you can hear me sir i we would like uh, you to also react and uh, tell us what did you make of the budget uh, most of the uh, speakers here have seen this as a balanced and a growth oriented budget do you also concur with that opinion uh, uh, i've said very clearly that on the direction of the budget it's very very positive and i think uh, it's really a growth oriented story in terms of direction in terms of allocation of the amounts, we would have expected more funds to come into each of these segments. So I think uh, we wouldn't have minded a bigger deficit in terms of deficit financing. And uh, the focus on deficit financing could have been moved stronger and a larger amount of money needed to be put into the various segments. But a fantastic budget in terms of direction. I don't think we could have heard a better story. But uh, we don't think that enough has been there put in to kickstart the economy. And also we expected that uh, the incentives to individuals, which is still 42%, I think needed to be corrected. And uh, also in the home loan segment, the 43CA is an is a impediment because many times and places the prices of uh, real estate is more than 10% below the ready recurrent rate or the circle rates that we see here today. So I think direction wise, fantastic. Uh, on a volume wise and economy wise, they're still lacking. All right, uh, Dr. Hiranandani, thank you so much uh, for giving us uh, your reaction. So Dr. Hiranandani saying that uh, direction wise, it's great for uh, long term visibility of the policy. It's great, but perhaps uh, uh, the allocations should have been more and the fiscal match should have been ma uh, managed perhaps a little better. Thank you for um, uh, being with us during the presentation of uh, the budget and uh, thank you to our speakers uh, here for analyzing the budget for us. Thank you, Nishan. Honestly, uh, we, uh, we have to get up, but thank you. <laughs> Kitan, you want to say something on the budget? Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, very quickly because it's been a very, very long Shole movie with the hands cut. <laughs> so I will just say four or five very quick things, uh, not in more than three minutes. One is, one is the legislation of the taxpayers charter, one has to see the fine print, but at least it legislates something which gives a handle and a hook to approach the tax department. As Niranjan Bhai said and uh, uh, 
uh, as it's evident to everybody, the personal tax reduction she mentioned about two lakh seventy three thousand versus uh, two lakh so seventy three thousand benefit. But the biggest benefit that people today get at that level is section eighty C. It constitutes eighty percent in value of all the benefits. So the seventy exemptions, I don't know what these are, small small <laughs> exemptions, but really eighty percent in value is eighty C. If you Say one and a half lakhs into 30 percent for ATC. That's Ashish. That's 45,000. So 73 minus 45,000 is a benefit of only 28,000. So the purpose of putting more funds and even even in in fact it may be lesser because as Gautam is pointing out, even the medical may not be there. I suppose we don't know that. The most important thing which I want to point out from a direct tax perspective. Is that Niranjan was asking about the 42 percent and the 38 percent of income between two to? There is no reference, and therefore I suppose there is no change. And let me tell you a very serious issue in that. See, today DDT is economically taxed. So when a company is declaring 100 rupees, it is thinking that it has declared 121 rupees because it is paying the DDT. Mm. Now the expectation of the shareholders will be give me 120. So let's say you get 120. Now, if your income is between two to five crores or more than five crores, you earlier you were paying 21 indirectly, and 14 because of the 10 percent plus surcharge, surcharge. So you are paying 35. Now you will pay 42 because they have said that the dividend will be taxed at quote unquote the applicable rate. So please understand the implication. Unless there is something in the fine print which is positive, and had it been so, she would have mentioned it. So I suspect that what we will see is what I am now saying. Only for people over five crores. Yeah, but but Pranay, why? No, no, two to five crores is thirty-eight percent. Thirty-seven percent. So, so okay, yes. So it will not be much different. It will be small difference. For small people like us, below ten lakhs, it's very beneficial. <laughs> Because all your income is in a company. Okay, I think just uh, one more thing which Gautam very correctly pointed out. Gautam pointed out that for one crore to five crore, the small sector doing away with tax audit from a procedural and administrative standpoint is a very serious relaxation because the headache of dealing with these kind of issues is quite significant. But it's obviously not going to kickstart the economy, but it reduces <laughs> harassment. <laughs> See, today the reduction of harassment is itself being looked at as a positive. Okay, so right. from that point of view, yes. Even, Thank you. Even, That's even about. Living. I mean, many small, small things, but this is. Sailish, boy, you know. Sailish, boy, thoda. Ha, two minutes, DJ. Ha. Mike, kitha gaya? Any on the on the That's GST, the maybe Bakul boy can say something. Okay. Aisha. Okay. Everybody, so many. Everyone wants to join. Most welcome. At least, welcome. See what happens. See what happens. The the tax audit form is so large and so complex. At least that, you know, there is a saying in English. You no, know, thank God for small mercies. Barabar. This is in that category. Yes, petrol is two crores. So because I have the mic, I'll just say yes, this. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> that, <laughs> Sorry, three-hour movie. Usually, so. when the budget is very positive, the whole year performance is bad. But because this year the budget is not so positive, the whole year's performance, I'm telling you, will be fantastic. And that plays to the fact that. that what niranjan said is right the direction is all right we talked at our half yearly meeting on all the it enablement and all of that she talked about all the it terms about 20 times everything which is an absolutely fresh ai uh, it internet of things bio robotics sab bol diya so i think that's a very positive thing uh, the the big thing that i picked out from this budget is that the kick starting of credit flow will mm -hmm. definitely happen three credit guarantee schemes have been put in place for msmes for infrastructure and for education now that is a game changer implementation should be proper no no they put it in place right she has made small tweaks very cleverly which will make this an agriculture also mm. so in four areas credit guarantee has been enhanced so the encouragement to lend this is something very very critical credit flow it, if it happens the industry will will kick start absolutely
So that these are the big things, but good. Sure. Yeah, but you know, given the fact, Bhai, given the fact that the full tax has to be paid and within 30 days. So first of all, remember that many of these demands, Firoz on the origin is there and he knows that many of these demands are completely high pitched. How will you and 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 you are telling them to pay within these next 30 days? How will this happen here? I don't think so.